In this lesson, we want to work on the payment page. So after clicking on the go to payment on the checkout page, you will be redirected to the payment page to see all the order information in read only mode for paying the order. Follow this video if you like to know how. Okay, here is the roadmap for this lesson. The first thing that we want to do is generating the payment page component. So open up the terminal and write NGGC for generating the component inside components folder, pages folder with the name of payment dash page. Okay, it is generated, close the terminal, then open up the explorer. As you can see, we have the payment page component inside the pages folder. Now, first of all, let's add it to the app routing module for having a separate page. Open up app routing module, duplicate the checkout one at the bottom of it and set its path to payment and its component to payment page component. For the payment, we need to have the off guard too, because here the user should be authenticated too. Okay. Now let's open up the payment page inside the browser. Here write payment. As you can see, we have payment page works. In this page, we want to get the new saved order from the server. So we need to add an API for it. Close the app routing module, open up the explorer. On the back end side, open up the order router. After the create API, write router.get for its address, write new order for current user and for the handler write async handler inside it write async request and response and inside the handler let's write const order equal to await order model dot find one so we want to find one item from order model with this condition its user should be request.user.id and its status should be order status dot new. As you can see, it says that user is not available inside the request. For fixing this problem, set the type of the request to any. Okay, we are getting the new order for the user from the order model. Now we need to check if order is available. Send it to the user response.send order otherwise send a bad request to the user response.status set the status to http bad request and send it to the user now on the next step we need to create a service to be connected to this api but first of all we need to add this url to the url so press ctrl p open up urls.ts duplicate the create order url here write order new for current user url and here instead of the create paste new order for current user url here we go close the urls close the router and let's go to the order service and add the method order service after the create method let's add get new order for current user its type is observable of order and here we need to return this.http.get with the type of order to this URL. Order underline new for current user that we added seconds ago. Here we go. The order service method is ready too. Now we can go to the payment page and use it. So close the order service, open up the explorer and open the payment page component. Here we need an order field with the type of order that is equal to new order by default. Here inside the constructor, we need the order service. So let's inject it here. Write order service with the type of order service. Then write order service dot get new order for current user and subscribe to it for its next. We'll get an order and we'll set the order of this component to the order that's coming from the server. And for the error part that will get a bad request here, it's obvious that we don't have a new order for the current user. So we need to redirect it to the checkout page because we create the order after clicking on the go to payment inside the checkout page. 
For doing this, we need Angular Router. So let's add it here. Router with the type of router. And write router.navigate by URL slash checkout. Here we go. The payment page component TypeScript file is ready, but we are not showing anything. So let's go to the HTML file of payment page and show something. Clear everything here. This page is completely similar to the checkout page. So let's go to the checkout page component HTML file. Press Ctrl A or Command A in Mac OS and copy everything. Then paste it here. Here we need to change a couple of things. The first one is the app title. Instead of order form, we want it to be order summary. We don't need this form here. And instead of it, we need to have a div with the class of summary. Inside it, we need just two divs for showing the name and the address of the user. So the first div, inside it, we have an H3 for the name and a span for showing the value of the name, order.name. Duplicate this div, change the name to address, and use order.address for the second one. The next thing that we need to change is this title for the map. It should be shipping address. And this button for creating the order should be removed too. On the next lesson, we are going to add the PayPal button here, okay? Now let's look at the browser to see the result. Here we go. We have order summary, name of the user, address of the user. And as you can see, we cannot see the saved location of the user because we didn't work on the map yet. But before doing that, let's work on the CSS of this page and make it beautiful. So let's open up the payment page CSS file. And since the CSS of payment page is also similar to the CSS of checkout page, let's copy the parts that are similar. So click on this checkout page component, click here and select the CSS file. Close the checkout page component HTML file. Go to the top, copy container and the content. It seems that the payment page component CSS file is closed. So let's open it up again. Paste it here. For the content, we need two other things. Click here and copy these two. It is common between content and form. Since we don't have a form in this page, we just need to put it for the content. And two other things from this page is the buttons container and buttons. So let's copy it and put it here. So we just copied everything that was common between the checkout page and payment page. So close the checkout page CSS file. Now the only CSS selectors that we need to add is for the summary class. Here after the content, write dot summary and select its direct div children. Set their display to flex and margin top to 0.7 RAM. For the spans inside the summary, set their font size to 1.2 RAM. And for the H3 inside the summary, Set their margin to zero from the top, one RAM from the right, zero from the bottom, and zero from the left. And set their flex basis to five RAM. Now let's check out the result. Here we go. Now it is completely similar to the checkout page, but the summary details are read only. But now the problem is here. First of all, we cannot see the selected location of the user on the map. And the second problem is we still can select another location on the map. So we need to define a read-only input for the map component and make it possible to be read-only. Let's do it. Here, close the CSS file, scroll down, hold the control down and click on the map. Let's copy this order input and paste it, set its name to read-only and make it false by default. So if we don't set the read only, it will be false by default. And that's what we want. Now, if the read only is true, we need to show the location of address lat LNG inside the order. I don't want to use the order.address lat LNG every time that I want to have access to it. So I'm going to create a getter for it. So write get address lat LNG, then return this.order.address lat LNG. Put an exclamation mark here to fix the error. Okay, now every time that we want to have access to the order address lat LNG, we can use just this dot address lat LNG. 
Very nice. Let's get back to the ng on init. Here we cannot use this ng on init for showing the location because it will be triggered before the new order that's coming from the server. So instead of this, we need to have a hook that listen to the changes. And we have something for that. And it is ng on changes instead of ng on init. So when we get the order from the server and we set it to the order inside the component page, this ng on changes will be called and we can use the order and its lat lng. But here we are going to have an error because it says that it implements ng on init. So instead of on init, write on changes. So you can remove on init from here. Now at the first line of the ng on changes, we need to say if the order is null or undefined just return and if it's not undefined initialize the map then check if this dot read only is true so the map is in read only mode and this dot address lat lng has value then call a function that we didn't create yet with the name of show location on read only mode Press control dot on it and select declare method show location on read only mode. Here we go. We have this method. Remove the throw error. We don't want to throw an exception here. Here we have two things to do inside this method. First of all, showing the marker on the order's location. And second is disabling everything related to the map. So first of all, let's put the map inside the variable with the name of M for ease of use. Then let's use this dot set marker with the value of this dot address lat lng. So this will set the marker for the orders lat lng and write m dot set view. So we need to move the view of the map to the location of the order. This dot address lat lng with the zoom level of this dot marker zoom level. Now before disabling everything, let's check it out inside the browser. As you can see, it's not showing anything because we didn't set the read only to true inside the payment page. So go to the payment page and here after the order set read only to true. Let's check it out inside the browser. It's not showing again. Let's open up the inspect and up the console. Oh, as you can see, we have an error. It says that lat lng dot lat dot to fix is not a function. The problem is coming from here inside the map component and this setter. The problem is the value from the order that's coming from the server is of type string, but this two fix is only available on the type of number. So we need to use if guard here. We need to write if lat lng dot lat dot two fixed is not available. It means if this function is not available inside this, then just return because it is already got fixed when we wanted to save it inside the database. Here we go. Now let's get back to the browser. As you can see, we have the location on the map, but as I told you before, we can select another locations. We can zoom in, zoom out, and we can do dragging. These are not very important, but changing the location and dragging the location is important because in the payment page, you just need to see a summary and do the payment done. So let's go and disable most of the things. On the show location on read only mode method, write m.dragging.disable. So it will disable the dragging, m.touchzoom.disable, m.doubleclickzoom.disable, m.scrollwheelzoom. Dot disable m dot box zoom dot disable m dot keyboard dot disable for turning off change the marker based on the click right m dot off click set m dot tap disable for the touch screens and for disabling the draggings of the marker write this dot current marker dot dragging dot disable here we go now look at the result okay no clicks, no draggings. The only thing that is available is these two buttons. That are no problem. And for read only mode, we shouldn't show this find my location button. Let's put an ng if for it. Click here 
and select map component HTML file. Here for this button, put an NGF when it's not read only. Now let's look at the result. Here we go. Now everything about this lesson is ready. On the next lesson, we are going to create a PayPal button component to show the PayPal button here. You've been watching Code with Nasir and I hope to see you next time.